I'm going to continue my video about Norm Bega. If you feel like you missed something, check out the previous video. The link is in the description. I hope you guys can enjoy this video. I noticed on old maps that North America was called America Septentrionalis. I didn't bother looking up the official explanation. I know from my study of ancient German that Septentrion means seven stars. Why is the country called America of the seven stars? I don't know. But I do know that some tribes of the Native Americans claim ancestry in the Pleiades, or seven stars. Maybe there's another reason, apart from the official one, that the first US Confederate flag showed seven stars. In any case, old maps show a history that has nothing to do with what we're taught by National Geographic, a subsidiary of the entertainment company Disney, and Discovery Channel, owned by entertainment company Warner Bros. Just to drive this point home, here's a 1584 map by Spanish royal cartographer Geronimo Chaves. It shows the Kingdom of La Florida, today known as Texas, Mississippi, Alabama, Louisiana, Georgia, Arkansas and Florida. Notice two things. 1. All the cities. 2. None of them sound Spanish or English. What is this language? We have the names Blabahali, Chuala, Cugada, Chuaquil, Aix, Nagwater, etc. These Native American names have the feel of Aztec and Basque. Even though much knowledge has been burned and hidden, the forgers of history weren't thorough. There are a lot of old books that will have you scratch your head regarding American history. This is a screenshot from the 1824 book, History of the State of New York, by historian John Van Ness Yates. You can pause this video to read it for a moment. Here we have Tartars entering from Russia through Alaska, Danes, Finns, Welshmen and even Malay, wandering around Kentucky and Tennessee. The 1568 book, The Land Travels of David Ingram, shed some light on Norm Bega. Ingram and two other men were said to be the first Europeans to have traversed the distance between the Gulf of Mexico and Nova Scotia. As he was shipwrecked, he made the entire trek by foot. Ingram's account is considered credible, because many of the reported places, plants and wildlife, turned out to be real by subsequent travelers. His description of Norum Bega. He saw kings decorated with rubies six inches long, and they were borne on chairs of silver and crystal, adorned with precious stones. He saw pearls as common as pebbles, and the natives were laden down by their ornaments of gold and silver. The city of Bega was three quarters of a mile long, and had many streets wider than those of London. Some houses had massive pillars of crystal and silver. Massive pillars of crystal and silver. He says that there are kingdoms full of wealthy cities, and that the kingdoms are continually at war with each other, consistent with this map which was discussed in the previous video. The first kings came from a place called Gizika, and call themselves by that name. The Gizika wear rubies, six inches long and two inches broad, and the kings were carried around in a sumptuous chair of silver or crystal. The word Gizika sounds Slavic at first sight. I looked up the surname Gizika without the C and found that it's most prevalent in Congo, Africa and Croatia. In the Hausa language of Africa, the word means nutrition. In Swedish, Gizika means piglet and Jisik means creepy, while Jisika means bitch and Jesik means badass. There's a town in Poland called Jisiko. Ingram says they didn't stay anywhere for more than three nights, except for the city Balma, which was a rich city a mile and a half long. There, they stayed a week. Other cities they stayed were called Achala, Bega, and Gunda. Bega is short form for Norum Bega. I'm familiar with Achala, it still exists today as Ocala in central Florida. Ocala has a gigantic underground cavern and tunnel system, much of it unexplored even today. Rumors of finding skeleton giants, stone idols and treasures abound. The text describes various towns and villages. It mentions, Gunda is a small town. Achala is a big town, about a mile long. Balma is a wealthy city, about a mile and a half long. Bega is a country and town with the same name, three quarters of a mile long. Sagnanad is a town almost a mile in length. Baranyad is a city about a mile and a quarter long. There's also a place with a river and town that is smaller than the first mentioned ones. Additionally, the text notes the presence of plenty of ox hides in the area. The America described by Ingram was many-sided. There were noblemen and naked men, kings and peasants, olive-skinned, red-skinned, white and black. 
The nobleman, Ingram reports, wore feathers in their hair. The feathers were how to tell the difference between nobleman and commoner. This would mean that the people we know as Indians, or Native Americans, were once noblemen, wealthy kings who wore ruby, silver and crystal. Ingram reports that America is abundant with pearls and pearl trade. The people are commonly five foot high, and many of them have shaved heads or partially shaved heads with hair traces, just like we see in Native Americans. There are olive-colored skin in the South, and in the North the people are of more tanned skin. In the South, the people are mostly naked with only a cloth or palm covering their private parts. In the North, where it's colder, people are clothed in animal hide. Some people are described as brutish and beastly, while others are courteous and kind. Ingram speaks of sheep, deer, foxes, wolves and horses, but also of animals either not known today or not known to have been in America, such as elephants, giant birds, and giant horse-eating beasts. It is for this reasons, some have, unsuccessfully, tried to put it all off as fiction. You'll have an easier time reading this snippet, if you know that the letter that looks like an F, is an S. The text describes a creature seen in those countries that is twice the size of a horse. It looks like a horse in many ways, including its mane, hooves, hair and mane. However, it has a smaller hind part like a greyhound. These beasts have two teeth or horns that are a foot long, growing straight out from their nostrils. They are natural enemies of the horse. According to Ingram, some of the people worship a kind of black dog or black calf called Kalachio, and also worship the sun, moon, and stars. Their word for kingdom was Garakona. This is interesting, as the English word garrison refers to a fort, buildings, and soldiers. Their word for the sun was Karuka, which looks like the ancient German Karueka, which means it keeps returning, or keeps circling. The book says that one of the reasons for war between tribes is over cannibalism. He speaks of the people who are professed enemies of the cannibals and man-eaters. Here's an interesting part. The cannibals does most inhabit between Narumbaj and Bariaf. You can tell them from other people, because they have teeth like dogs. This is a screenshot from the 1890 book, Myths and Legends Beyond Our Borders. You can pause this video to read it for a moment. Here we learned that Norumbega, a city of crystal and silver, was possibly already there when Leif Erikson arrived in 986. And yes, even official history now acknowledges that the Norse people were in the Americas hundreds of years before Columbus. But they are using the Norse were in America before Columbus narrative now to explain any anomalous discovery made in America. In reality, the Norse were only one people of many. Some people are trying to claim that simple Norse structures built in New England are Norumbega. For instance, there is a so labeled Norumbega Tower that was built by the Vikings, but it has nothing to do with the city. It's a distraction from the real thing. If it was known with so many different names by different people, it's unlikely to be only a myth. We have, Orinbega, Norumbega, Norumbega, Norbega, Bega, Arambega, Arambek, Larambek. Norm is a Norwegian name. In Latin it means quiet. And Beck is Norse word for a stream of water. Yes, Norse is ancient German. Some researchers have noted the similarities of Nuremberg with the German city Nuremberg, but the word berg means mountain, whereas Bega refers to waters. Nurem, however, is the same meaning. This is all I was able to squeeze out of the internet about Nuremberg. Knowledge dissemination relies on you. Share this article far and wide.